spaceship there. Oh, somebody's got a frown on his face. Okay, my point. It was September 30th, 2008, when the doctor came in and he just said that my mom had a cardiac arrest. They told me uh, that I had to make a decision. They said we can do A, we could try to revive her, but we'll probably break every bone in her body and she's feeling all the pain. Or B, you know, we'll just let life take its course and, you know, we'll let her pass in peace. So frantically, I had a minute to decide what I had to decide, either life or, or this. And, um, you know, I was told not to let the decision that I was going to make at that moment haunt me for the rest of my life. So I made the decision to let her go. I remember I just laid at her side and I was just weeping like crazy. I told her everything I was grateful for. I told her, thank you so much for how you raised me. And the sad thing about it is that was the only time I did it. I never did it before. I never told my mom how much I loved her. I never told her, um, I never told her anything until that moment. Um, after that, I remember I kissed her and I said goodbye. I, uh, I went inside the waiting room. Um, I heard all these noises again, but no pitter patter of the feet, no nothing, you know? And I remember I looked it up and I was like, is it over? He said, yeah, it's over to this day. She's always in the back of my mind every time I do my schoolwork, um, everything I do, because she just taught me how to love, how to be kind, how to be real, how to be genuine towards people, um, live every second as if you're your last, and um, always help the poor. Live simply so other people can simply live. About a home I'll never see It may sound absurd, but don't be naive Even heroes have the right to bleed I may be disturbed, but won't you concede Even heroes have... Now we are all ordinary people But even an ordinary secretary or a housewife or a teenager can, within their own small ways, turn on a small light in a dark room. Yeah? I have read your letters, and your teacher has been telling me many things about your experiences. You are the heroes. You are heroes every day. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same as we are liberated from our own fear. Our presence automatically liberates others. It's not easy. The world used to be a bigger place. The world's still the same. It's just less in it. Going back means I'll have to face my past. I've been running from it for so long. Ow! Jesus, what was that for? It doesn't matter! It's in the past! <laughs> yeah, but it still hurts. Oh yes, the past can't hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it, or learn from it. Ah! You see? So what are you going to do? First, 
I'm gonna take your stick. No, 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 no! Not your stick! It's usually when someone in size gets hit with an airbag, is it's a fractured face, broken neck, maybe worse. It's like the airbag was coming for him and changed direction. It's... Michael, what happened to your arm? I stopped it. The things I want. And let us be rid of it. Once and for all. Come on, Mr. Frodo. I can't carry it for you. But I can carry you. Come on! Remus, Tonks, all of them. They didn't die in vain. But you will, because you're wrong. <laughs> Harry's heart did beat for us, for all of us. It's not over. <laughs> Because we have to chase him. Okay, we're going in! Go, go! Move! He didn't do anything wrong. Because he's the hero Gotham deserves. But not the one it needs right now. So we'll hunt him. Because he can take it. He's not I.